Well, welcome to worship. So glad that you're joining us in worship. Those of you who are here with us in West Des Moines, those of you who are joining us at any of our campuses, at Hope Waukee, Hope Grimes, any of our local sites online, it's so good to be able to come together uh, and to worship one another. This week after Christmas, it's, it's hard to imagine that anybody came back. It was an incredible celebration. You saw that recap video that was there that was put together from our Christmas Eve services here at West Des Moines, and, and it, was, it was amazing. It was incredible. It was overwhelming in the best possible way. It, it was surprising, and, and I say that very intentionally. It wasn't surprising because we were wondering like, if anybody would show up or not. It was surprising because that's just what God does. God surprises us. And I hope and pray that every one of us, we, we allow ourselves to be surprised by God. That we open our hearts and our minds and our ears to, to be surprised, to be overwhelmed in, in in the ways in which we see God show up in, in extraordinary ways. That's what happened this past year at Lutheran Church of Hope during our Christmas Eve services. You heard it in Hope 360. You probably heard it in announcements. But over the course of our uh, Christmas Eve services across all of our campuses and local sites and, and online, we had over 51,000 people join us for Christmas Eve this year at Hope. That's incredible. <laughs> it, it's surprising. That's, that's, it's just amazing. Uh, if, if, if you think about that, and I know that some of the people who worship at, at our local sites and, and online, they aren't in the Des Moines metro area. But just think about this for a moment. 50,000 people, over 50,000 people. The, the Des Moines metro area is about 500,000 people. So, so think about this. Just that at Hope Alone, one in ten people heard the good news about Jesus Christ this Christmas. Think about that. And think about all the fact, the fact that all of the other churches in our communities that have incredible uh, services where people heard about Jesus Christ. Our, our world looks different because we throw the doors wide open. Because we proclaim with, with, with all that we have that God showed up. Here at West Des Moines alone, we had over 31,000 people. It was, it was just, it was inspiring. You're inspiring. You are. You, you, you're amazing. It's, it's, so, it's so humbling to be a part. Isn't it so humbling, all of us, to be a part of what God's doing? It's incredible. And it shouldn't come as any surprise to us because we've been reading through the Bible this year. And when we read through God's word, we, we see that God shows up and, 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 it, and, and he changes and transforms us. It's the very last weekend, the very last day of 2023. I hope you have great New Year's Eve plans. But over the course of the last year, as a church, we've read through the whole Holy Bible this year. The response to it has been so incredible that I literally opened up a new folder in my email inbox. It's just titled The Whole Holy Bible. Because every week, every single week, for like 52 weeks, every single week, I would get at least one message of somebody talking about how, the way, how, how God changed them through reading his word. God's word is living and it's active, it's alive, it encounters us. We can spend our whole lives digging through his word. Some of you might say, well, well, I missed it this last year, so I must have missed out on it. Now, actually, all the resources from the whole Holy Bible are going to be on our website. We'll have the reading plan so you can read along. We'll have all of the podcasts. We'll have devotions. We'll have study guide. We'll have all of that stuff. And in fact, I encourage you, even if you read through the entirety of God's word this year, to go back and do it again. You'll never get to the, to the end of discovering what God has to say for you. And as we did it, we, we read it and, and we learned it. It isn't just reading it, it's also learning it and, and starting to understand it. But it's not just reading it and starting to understand it. It literally is, it's living it out as well. And when we live it out, it's what happens when we live it out is we, we become what our theme is going to be this next year. Is we become a church that's after God's own heart. It's going to be our theme for 2024. You'll hear a lot more about it starting next week. But think about back to that, back to that number of, of 1 in 10. 1 in 10 people start to, uh, to live after God's own heart in our community. Think about how our workplaces, how our schools, how our neighborhoods how our friendships, how our families 
look different when we go all in on Jesus. Now, now I know some of you are going to like, well, didn't, didn't you do that before? Yeah, we did it. We've always been a church that's been all about Jesus. But we read it, we learned it, and we're really going to, to get after what does it mean to live it out. How does our world look different? It's our mission. To reach out to the world around us and share the everlasting love of Jesus Christ. To live it out in our communities, in our families, in our friendships. So it's going to be an extraordinary year. We're going to have 10 sermon series over the 12 months. And I can't wait. I really hope that you'll join us. This is can't miss worship this next year here at Hope. Because when we do that, we, we see how, how much God loves us. And we see how much his love can give us to the world around us. And how much we are a part of what he's doing in the world. This last Christmas Eve, was, it, was a, it was a unique, it was a special one for us as a family. Before Christmas Eve uh, started, uh, both of our kids, Trey and Jade, one's a 7th grader, one's a 6th grader, they said, hey, we're going to all 10 services uh, this year at Christmas Eve. And we told them, you can't just come and eat the free food, and you can't just come and eat all the cookies, and you can't just come and, and, and annoy all the people who are around. Like, if you're going to come to all 10 services, that's great, but you have to do something. Where is it that you want to plug into? You see, one of the things is we can't do all these Christmas Eve services if we don't have your help. And it's amazing, all the, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that said, hey, I'm willing to help, I'm willing to step in. And I'd start to list all the different ways in which you stepped in to help at Christmas Eve services, but I'd fear that I would leave one out. So our son Trey said, hey, I would, I'd like to, to read scripture. And so he was scheduled to read at three different services it was actually at our 9 p.m. service, the last service we had at Christmas Eve, that one of our, our readers wasn't able to show up. And I didn't learn about it until like two or three minutes into the service. And like the Bible reading was like 10 minutes into the service. And so I I'd sent my son a text message. I'm like, hurry up, put your nice clothes back on, and get backstage and get a microphone. You're going to be reader number two. And he responded to me in, in text message. And kids, they use weird things when they text. I don't understand it. And so his, his only response to me was, fur, F-R. And I'm like, what does that mean? And I showed it to mom, what does that mean? And, and she's like, it means for real. And I'm like, oh. So I'm like, you got to come back and read. He's like, for real? And I'm like, so then I responded back to him, I'm like, fur, like for real. Like, you need to go. Like, you need to get backstage, like right now. And send me a text message as soon as you get there so that I know that we won't be missing a reader. And so he actually, he went and did it. And it was pretty awesome. And it was really cool. Our daughter Jade, she's the creative one in our family. She loves art. She loves to draw. She loves anything creative. It's incredible all the things that she creates. Her room is like, it's like, it's like a, it's a mini studio. She has stuff everywhere in it. And so she said, I want to help with creative arts. And Jen Berger, who's our director of creative arts at Hope, said, Jen, can Jade hang out with you this Christmas Eve? And Jen said, oh, I'll put her to work. And I'm like, that's great. And so Jade got to help Jen prepare like the canvases. They prayed together over the canvases. They got to pray together over the artists, which, I mean, that was just cool, but it was something that our daughter will never forget. And then Jen said to me in the morning of the 24th, she said, hey, do you think Jade, uh, Jade and I have been talking, do you think it would be okay if she painted during our 9 p.m. service? Renee, one of the other painters, said that Jade could paint alongside of her. I looked at Jade and I said, for, no, for real? Like, I said, is that, is that okay? And, and Jade's like, yeah, Dad, I want to. And I'm like, Don't, let's not tell Mom. Let's have it be a surprise. And a picture that I'll remember my entire life is this one right here. Because in the corner you see Jade doing what she loves and what she's wired to do. And then you get to see the bald, shiny head guy up there doing what he feels called to do. And for me, that's just a picture not of my family but it's of the church. So Paul said to the church in Corinth, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. I hope you know that. I hope you understand how, how many gifts that you have and how God wired you and he didn't wire you on accident, he wired you purposefully. And you have the opportunity to use your gifts in, in a way that, that shines the light of Jesus into the world around us. And we do all of that. And we did all of that over the last few weeks because of this simple reality of, of the fact that he showed up. That's what Christmas is all about. That she'll have a child and they will call him Emmanuel, which literally means God is with us. 
And the God who created the whole thing enters into our world in the humblest of ways. To the humblest of people. That if we were to create and, 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 and design the story the way that we thought would, would go the, the most likely of ways, we would have never had the, the, the God of the universe enter in as an infant. And we'd never have the God of the universe enter into an infant into a stable because nobody had a place for him. But in fact, God did it the way that he did it so that he, we would all know that, that he showed up for us. He showed up for Mary. He showed up for Joseph. He showed up for the shepherds. He showed up for the wise men. He's shown up for the, the millions and millions and millions of people who have heard the good news of, of his love. And we can know all of that and we can agree with all of that, but sometimes there's a lot of us who wonder if he's ever going to show up for us. And maybe that's what this Christmas season has felt like for you. So that's great. I can intellectually process all of that. I can understand all of that. And, and I think it's good for everyone that, that God showed up and he showed up in that way. And people have had this encounter, this, this experience. And they felt all the feels over Christmas Eve. But it, it just doesn't feel that way for me. And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for God to show up. And I wonder if he ever will. Here's the beauty of this story. The power of this story is that the story of Christmas, it, it doesn't end at the manger. It doesn't end with Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and, and the shepherds and the wise men who come later. No, there's, there's, there's more to the story. There's always more to the story with God. And you heard about it in the Bible reading that you heard read just a few minutes ago. There's a guy by the name of Simeon and a woman by the name of Anna who had been waiting their entire lives for God to show up. Who day after day, year after year, had relied and depended on this promise that God had made to them. That he was going to show up. But the waiting's hard, isn't it? I mean, any of us who have kids, the whole season of Christmas, we, we know how hard it is for kids to wait. But it's just not the kids either. It's us, and I don't know what it is that you're waiting for. Maybe what it is that you're waiting for to pass, to end, to come. But waiting's difficult. I was thinking about a movie clip to use th this weekend to illustrate the difficulty of waiting. And then I remembered that it was uh, family worship weekend. So I was going to show this really great scene from The Matrix when there's all this. And I realized that that wouldn't be appropriate for kids. So parents, you're welcome. And I found a clip that actually not just the kids, but you might appreciate a little bit more. Take a look. Well, I was hoping you could run up late for us. We are in a really big hurry. Sure. What's the plate? Two nine T number. Two nine T H D zero three. Two nine T H D zero three. T H D zero three. H D zero three D mm -hmm. zero three zero three. Hey, Flash, want to hear a joke? No. Sure. Mm. Okay. What do you call a three-humped camel? I don't know. What do? You call a uh, three humped camel. Three humped camel. 
pregnant. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. You heard her really at the very beginning. You're like, we're in, we're in a hurry. We, 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 need you, we need you to move, and it just feels as if Sloth's not going to move at all. And maybe you're feeling that way with God right now. Hey, God, I'm, 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 I'm in a hurry. I'd like to see this and... And you wonder if God's just kind of like just not even moving or at best moving at a snail's pace. Here's the reality of life is we all wait, don't we? We all have something that we're waiting for. Some of them are really important, big things, and some of them are trivial. Like I've been waiting my whole life because I just desperately want my teams to win a championship in any sport. I'm a Minnesota sports fan, a huge Minnesota sports fan, and my teams are terrible. There was a statistic that came out just this last year that, that Minnesota professional sports have been in the longest drought without a championship of any other professional city in the entirety of the United States. And I'm like, well, great, that's my team. That's just wonderful. And like every time I go through a season, I just, I just hope and I pray like maybe this is the year. And, and I'm like, how long am I going to have to wait? Like my son one time, he's like, Dad, do you think the Vikings will win a Super Bowl in my lifetime? And I'm like, probably not. Probably not. Like I tell you that because I love you and I want you to have joy in your life. Don't be a bandwagon fan. I so admire you who can be bandwagon fans. Like you're like, I'm just going to follow. Like how many, how many 49er fans do we have now? Because they're so great. And you're like, I'm going to follow them because they're the ones who are winning. And I, I've been cursed with not being able to be a bandwagon fan. So I wait, and I wait, and sometimes I wonder if we think about that with God. Like, I want to be more of a bandwagon fan. Like, I'll wait on God when it's convenient for me. But if it doesn't feel like I'm winning the way that I want to be winning, and things are happening the way that I want things to happen, I'm just going to jump to the next thing that's going to satisfy what it is that I want and what it is that I desire right now. Because while we wait, it's so easy to skip to the next thing because we just don't want to have to wait. We live 24-7, 365. Like we're not, we're so culturally ingrained in a way that we just aren't, a, we, we get it when we want, whatever we want. And I wonder how important the story of Simeon is for us and Anna. I mean, Simeon had waited his entire life. He was righteous, he was devout, and he was eagerly awaiting for the Messiah and the rescuer of Israel to come. Like, Simeon had spent his entire life hearing the stories, hearing the stories from all the prophets who had said that, that the rescuer, the Messiah, the, 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 the anointed one was going to come and was going to bring freedom for all people for all time. And Simeon knew, though he was devout, he was righteous, like he knew those stories. He knew them like the back of his hand. And you have to imagine, you have to imagine, and maybe I'm reading between the lines too much, but you have to imagine there came a time, and there had to have come many times, where maybe Simeon had, a, had enough of God. And I and I don't I want I don't want to be irreverent saying that, and I'm not being irreverent saying that. And maybe sometimes you're going through whatever the things are that you're going through, and sometimes you say, "I've been praying, I've been asking, I've been seeking, I've been doing all the things," and if I'm going to be honest, I kind of wonder if I've had enough of God. If He's not going to listen to me, why do I have to listen to Him? It's not biblical to have those feelings and those thoughts. Read, read through the book of Psalms. And sometimes it's in those moments that we don't want to do it God's way. We kind of want to take control and do it our way. Because it's so easy to lose our focus when, when we're waiting. 
to, to say, okay, I, I, I know what it is that I, I, I want and I desire, but, but if it's not happening the way that I, I want it to happen, then I'm just going to take control of it and I'm just going to do it my way. How does that go for us? For the last 10 years, I've taken the same uh, route to get to work every single day. I go the same way. And my wife tells me that there's a quicker way to get to work. And I tell her this is the way I've gone for 10 years. And I'm not going to change because it's just, I love routine. I like that. Well, on my way to work, uh, there's a major intersection that I have to take a left-hand turn on. Every single day. For the last 10 years. And some of the times when I go to work, it's like super early in the morning on a Sunday morning. And there isn't a car to be seen. So a couple of years ago, I was at this uh, left-hand turn lane, and the light was red. How dare the light be red? And so I sat there, it was 6.45 on a Sunday morning, and the light was red, and it was not changing. And have you ever been there where you start to have resentment and animosity towards a traffic light? As if it ha has feelings? As if, as if you can will it to change? Like, if I'm just mad enough at this light, it's going to change. I was so mad. And so then the, the traffic light had the audacity to skip me. It skipped me. It went through reds. It went through greens. And I thought, I'm still sitting here. This is ludicrous. I don't deserve this. And it happened again. And I thought to myself, well, if the traffic light's gonna ch not going to change, I'm not going to obey the traffic light. And so I looked forward, I looked to my left, I looked to my right, and I started, and then I realized I should probably look behind me as well. And nobody was there. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it my way. And so I just took my left hand turn, and about two seconds later, the lights went on. <laughs> I know. I told a lot of traffic stories in, over the course of the last few years. I got to tell you, I've never been in an accident before, aside from hitting a little snowbank when I was 17. I'm a good driver, but it seems like I just have the worst luck when I drive. And so the lights go on, and the cop comes up to the, the window. And you want to know what he said? This was just crazy. He said, Pastor Jeremy, are you late for work this morning? And I thought, oh, my gosh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. I said, well, if you believe that Jesus loves you, you won't give me a ticket. No, I just did. I didn't say that. Like, no, honest to goodness, I did not say that. I promise. I did not say that. But whenever we kind of lose focus and we do it our own way, it never ends well. I wonder how tempting that was for Simeon and for Anna. So if God's not doing it for me, I'm not going to do it for God anymore. See, the Holy Spirit had even revealed to Simeon that he would not die before he saw the Messiah. But, but time was, was passing. And it wasn't happening and I wonder how badly Simeon just wanted to say, you know what, God? I've had enough. It's not your time, it's mine. Because patience doesn't come easy, does it? I think patience is one of the most difficult things to have. We realized that this last Christmas, because we were opening up presents on Christmas morning, and in our house, we, we, we do it where we go youngest to oldest. Like the, Jade gets to open up a present and everybody has to watch while she opens up her present. Everyone has to give their attention. And if you don't give your attention, you don't get to open up your next pre present. Like that's the thing that we do. We have to honor one another as hard as it is. We have to honor one another. So Jade opens her present tray and then, then Bridget and then me. And then even the dog gets presents. That's weird. Uh, because she never says thank you. I mean, but and then uh, go back to Jade. And we went around like three or four times. And there's only two presents left. And Jade opens up this present. And she said, oh, I was wondering when I was going to open this one up. And we said, well, what do you mean you were wondering when you were going to open it? she's like, you guys have to find a better place to hide the presents. <laughs> we're like, you looked? And she's like, of course. I'm, like I'm going to wait for Christmas to find out what I get for Christmas. And we told her. We said, wouldn't it have been more exciting if you would have waited till now to open it up? She's like, no, I was just excited when I opened it up in your bedroom. <laughs> because patience doesn't come natural. Time and time again, there's scripture passages that says we will wait upon the Lord. We'll be patient. 
We can't do that on our own. Patience doesn't come naturally, but it's a, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's the presence of God in the present tense. The Holy Spirit doesn't like hover over us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Paul says to the church in Galatia that, that your humanity produces all of these sorts of things in your life. And they're not very great things. But the Holy Spirit produces a different kind of fruit in your life. Love and joy and peace and patience. Patience means to literally to hold under. To hold under something and, 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 and to know that the thing that you're holding under is, is worth it. Here's the thing about God. And here's an important thing for all of us to remember. That when we're being patient, waiting upon God... That the one that we are waiting for always shows up. Every single time. That we can be patient because we know that even when we can't see him, he's still moving. God isn't dormant. God isn't absent. God isn't ignoring you in your life and all of the things or any of our lives and all of the things that we're going through. God is active and he's alive and, and he's doing things that we can't think or even understand. There's a mysteriousness, there's a mystery to God that we can't comprehend. But our inability to see it doesn't mean that it's not happening. we got to remember the one who it is that we're waiting for. we got to remember who he is and what, what he's done. I mean, think about all the ways in which God worked throughout humanity to bring and make possible that which seemed impossible. I mean, he created the world out of nothing. He created a, a nation of people through Abraham and Sarah who themselves had been waiting quite a long time to have a family of their own. And quite a few times they took matters in, to the, into their own hands and it didn't end well. He delivered his people from slavery in Egypt and he brought them and parted the Red Sea to deliver them into freedom. He brought his son into the world through a, a, a virgin. He healed the sick. He welcomed the outcasts. He raised the dead. See, there's never a moment in your life where God isn't moving. You say, oh, Jeremy, you, you, you couldn't say that. You couldn't possibly mean that. You don't know what it is that, that I'm going through right now. I don't. And not because of my, somehow, my, my intuition, but because of God's word, I know that he hasn't left you. Prophet Isaiah is speaking to people who had been waiting their entire lives for God to make right that which seems so wrong. Prophet Isaiah says to the people who Desperately, we're seeking freedom. Says so those who trust, and other translations will say those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength. When we're in those places, sometimes we'll, we'll say this. How many times have you said this? Maybe in your own life. I just don't have the strength to do it anymore. He gives you new strength. It's his power, it's his presence. It's what he has done, it's what he'll continue to do. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. You know, hindsight is an incredible gift that we have. And, and we realize that when we read through scripture that the people that we're reading about, they didn't have hindsight in that moment. And I wonder when Simeon went to the, the temple that day to, to pray while he was waiting, I wonder if there was a part of him that said, why am I doing this? And maybe there is a sense that Simeon was going to the temple that day and he was just, he was just going through the motions. Maybe you today got to worship wherever it is that you're worshiping 
And the only thing that got you here is you're just, you're just going through the motions. And sometimes we like, we're critical of ourselves because there are moments and times in life where we just go through the motions, but, but God can work through the motions, can he? I mean, there are times and there are seasons in life where sometimes it feels like the best we can do is just go through the motions. Don't underestimate what God can do through those motions, what he can do through you. I think about all of you who have, have kids who are on winter break and the fact that it's New Year's Eve. And there's all these things that you do. And I wonder how many people in your household said, I don't want to go to church today. And you're like, just do it. And like, okay, I'm just going to go through the motions. God's going to show up for you today. Don't doubt it. My, my grandma, she, the last decade of her life, but really the last year and a half of her life, she really, she really battled Alzheimer's. It was, it was awful. It was terrible. The last year of her life, I don't know if she recognized anybody. Go, you could visit her, and sometimes she wouldn't even open up her eyes. It was a hor- it's a horrible de- disease that too many of you know way too much about. But every so often in those last years of her life, she would open up her eyes, and do you want to know the only thing that she would say? She would begin to pray the Lord's Prayer in the language of the household in which she grew up, Norwegian. I remember my my grandma opening up her eyes and and I'd say, hi, Grandma, and she would just start praying it. And I've thought so many times, how many times in my grandma's life when she was praying that prayer felt like she was just going through the motions. And God showed up. Look, sometimes when we wait, we feel like that's the best we have, but God promises to meet us there. And that's what he did for Simeon. That's what he did for Anna. Who would have known that that day when Simeon went, I don't know the condition of his heart when he went that day, but he went that day. And I don't for a minute think that the the course of human history would have changed if Simeon wouldn't have gone to the temple that day. But do you want to know whose life would have changed? Simeon's. And Simeon showed up and God showed up in a very real way. And it literally changed the course of his humanity. I have seen your salvation. He cries out. He sings out. He declares and prays to God. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. You're a light to the nations. You revealed yourself to me. And God, you're revealing yourself to all of humanity. He is a light, he says about Jesus. He is a light to reveal God to the nation. And he's glory for all your people, Israel. Here's what I want you to know as we close out 2023 and we get ready for 2024 and for the rest of all of our lives. Is he's here for you too. We say it all the time in worship. We don't believe it's an accident that you're here. We don't. We've been praying for you. And we know despite all of the things or in spite of all of the things that are going on in your life, we know and we trust that God promises to meet you here. This is what Paul writes to the Galatian church. Paul says, but when the time, when the right time came, there's two different ways to talk about time uh, in, in the Greek, in the language of the New Testament. There's one word that's used in, in the Greek when they talk about time and that's That's chronos, and that's chronological time. Chronos is sequential time. Chronos is seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and months and years. It's it's the, the linear time. That's not what Paul is talking about here. Paul's writing to the people in Galatia, but Paul, through his living word, God's living word, is saying this to you right now. That when just the right time came for you, God's time, Kairos time, opportune time, God revealed himself to you. Not just to Mary, not just to Joseph, not just to the shepherds, to the wise men, to Simeon, to Anna, but to you. It's the right time. God is showing up and he didn't leave you out of it. Now is the time for you. Now is the time. Today is the day of your salvation, the Bible says. 
The Bible promises us today is the day of your salvation. Now is the time. Don't underestimate the power of God and what God is doing and what God can do. It's not about you getting it right. It's not about you doing all the things. It's not about you somehow making sure that you can do all the things and take all the control to make sure that God does what he's supposed to do on your time. No, to now is the right time. Today is the day of your salvation. You see, the infinite became finite and he showed up in a manger. He showed up in a manger that was in a stable because there was literally no place for them. Man, sometimes I think in life, the way it gets so busy and the way sometimes we take control, I wonder if there's no room in the end that we have for him either. But he still comes. And he still came into a little town called Bethlehem, a nowhere place on the outskirts of everything, to shine his light into the darkness. Scripture declares that the darkness can never extinguish it. For you and for all people, he's the light to the nations. And we take that light and we shine it to the world. We're all a part of Christ's body. Each of us, we have a part. A lot of us are going to make a lot of resolutions tomorrow as we reflect on what we want for 2024. At the top of that list, Say, God, reveal your light to me. And let me be somebody who's after your own heart. My goodness, it's so amazing to be able to finish this year with you. I think about all the things that we've experienced over the course of the past year. But you want to know what's even better? It's the best is yet to come. Because the light came, he showed up. A little town of Bethlehem. I, lo- I love these words. We're going to sing this song in just a moment. But think about this. Yet in the dark streets shineth. In the darkness of our world, the everlasting light shines. The hopes and fears of, of, of all the years. Of our lives, of the prophet lives, of, of humanity's lives. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Right here, right now. Now is the time. Open your heart and your mind. Experience the love that Jesus Christ has for you. Even though the scripture says it's too great to understand fully. Never be able to comprehend the infinite love that Jesus Christ has for you. There are one in ten people who heard about the message of Jesus. There's nine left. We're going to spend this year reaching the nine. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing the song together, and then we'll go shine our lights. Amen.